scared my pap. What is it? Now? <laughs> it wasn't a doctor. It was a guy I met in Chinatown. Chinatown. <laughs> I gotta start. I gotta stop saying Chinatown. <laughs> Even though as far as racial epithets go, I feel, I feel China Man is probably the least offensive ever. <laughs> man from China. It's hard to get that fucking worked up. It's hard to get worked up about anything now that we're all going to die in two weeks. Who gives a fuck anymore about LGBT? <laughs> I didn't even care about the coronavirus two weeks ago when I was in China. It was funny. Yeah, you know, people get outraged all the time. I'm outraged. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could be. I'm like, what is that? How you're like, I'm a grown person. You think I'm gonna be offended by anything some fucking dude says? God damn, I walk through fucking blood and bones in New York City, man. <laughs> Today. <laughs> people say, why are you 35? Uh, you know, I said, well, 50 just seemed like a nice round number. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I didn't eat 50 eggs. This is my, I've, uh, my stomach has become distended by the deadly virus coursing through my veins. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I don't pretend to understand medical gobbledygook, but this doctor today told me I'm uh, more virus than host. <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh -huh. I'm getting ready. Fuck it. I got I'm buying spam and shit. I got a whole bunch of canned carrots, but it goes beyond that. You got to really prepare. You got I got a room and it's got a lock on it. Got uh, spam and uh, firearms, got a lot of shotgun pieces. <laughs> and I'll put a fucking hole through my son's belly, I don't give a shit. <laughs> if it comes right down to it, I've suddenly realized what I really care about, only me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, go get, find your own spam if anything happens. It ain't getting any from me. <laughs> I was in Las Vegas, you know, just before I came here, back in the old days. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, gambling. I'm a degenerate gambler, which is, and in Vegas they take, you know, they take advantage of me. They always pay me in chips. I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> Sometimes one chip, just a big chip. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I like going to Indian casinos because here's the thing. I don't like fucking. I, a sleazy Vegas, you know what I mean? I don't like losing my money to these motherfuckers, you know, big corporations. <laughs> Indian casinos I like because it, I feel I'm giving back for, you know. <laughs> Listen, I methodically murdered their people. What do you want? <laughs> Which, looking back, was way out of line, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was an error in judgment. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm square, they told me last week. <laughs> square for a lot of you guys, too. <laughs> I did my share. <laughs> oh, my Lord, God. I'll tell you this, this is from the heart. I don't have any heart left. <laughs> cancer of the heart. I heard you could get that. Wouldn't that be the worst cancer? You go, my heart? What? <laughs> I thought I would either die from cancer or heart, not from both. What the fuck is that? <laughs> but uh, the number uh, one, uh, the number one and two causes of death, cancer and uh, heart disease. That was that was four days ago. <laughs> now they're tied for two and three, distant second and third. <laughs> number one, your brain stem will start to melt from the fucking virus spinning around you. <laughs> then blood will shoot out of your asshole. 
followed by your liver, which is your biggest organ, the coronavirus attacks the liver, and the liver hardens like a rock within two days. And then... <laughs> what is happening there? Is that a champagne or something? Are you, are you guys uh, celebrating something? Oh, that's nice. You just like drinking champagne. That's where you know you have a drinking problem. When you drink, <laughs> drink champagne. <laughs> Eight in the morning, you had some champagne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. All right. I have a mimosa. Hold the orange juice. <laughs> just a little orange juice, a little on the side, just a picture of an orange. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, in Vegas, uh, I realized something. You know, people go to Vegas sometimes, right? And they got a system. You know what I mean? A system. They're going to bust the bank. They're going to beat the casino. Out of Canada, they got a system. And then I realized, well, this is what happened. I was in an elevator, right? And I'm coming down the elevator. And there's a guy and a woman get on the elevator, a man and a wife, it turns out. And suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, the guy blurts out to the woman. He goes, what the fuck? Give me the money. I, I tell you, I don't give a fuck what I said. Just give me the money. <laughs> so I think that he was calling an audible on his system. <laughs> That's my old theory. <laughs> it's irrational thing, gambling, though, you know? Being addicted to gambling, it's fucking so weird. I always think to myself, what the fuck is that? I go, God damn, I need to lose more money. <laughs> I haven't lost money for two weeks. I'm starting to Jones, I <laughs> My bank account's getting big. <laughs> Can't take it, I tell you. It's a fucking odd thing. But here's how irrational gambling is. I went by a roulette table, right? So I just walked by it. I put $100 down on, on red, and the thing uh, spins around, and the little silver uh, ball lands on black. And then I say, fuck, I almost picked that. <laughs> <laughs> Understood too. That was the other odd thing. <laughs> the table, like, oh yeah, you got. It. You can't uh, first. Uh, you understand anything about the game of roulette? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Here's something you don't want to do. Never works. When you play a roulette, right? I bet even, and then if it hits zero, I go, hey, even number. <laughs> Double zero, I don't know, that's not even a number. But zero, <laughs> I proved it to the guy. It was divisible by two. I took out a paper, I prepared a proof. I gave it to the pit boss, he brought me upstairs, a guy put a staple in my arm. He stapled my arm to my chest. <laughs> Airplane from Las Vegas. Here's something, here's a little tip for you if you're flying in an airplane. Always pick, and by the way, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm unshaven, but I had to do this Sandler thing. Listen, if Sandler, <laughs> Sandler says, uh, you know, hey, Normie, I think maybe a beard, you gotta do it, because then I get to be in his movie for 10 seconds. <laughs> so anyways, look for that, it's coming out in a couple of years. <laughs> I'm for 10 seconds. <laughs> But anyways, uh, what I was going to say was, pick the um, um, exit row. If you're in an airplane, always pick the exit row. Because you get like an extra six inches or a foot of, uh, of labor. And all you have to do to get the exit row is lie. <laughs> what happens is, the stewardess walks up, flight attendants! <laughs> <laughs> the flight attendant walks a lot of different words, okay? <laughs> words mean different things. <laughs> I come from another time. <laughs> I'm going to start saying that. I come from another time. Usually it's people from the future talking like that, but I'm from the past. <laughs> I come from another time. A time when... 
<laughs> I remember when I was a little boy, I said to my dad, I said, hey, dad, I think I might be a little girl. He said, I heard I had a cock. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, man. Yeah. Nothing. I only tell you that story to illustrate how hateful we were back then. And the old days, <laughs> my dad was hateful, and now it wasn't always. Uh, it wasn't pure hateful because every you know every coin has an obverse, right? So he was good and he was bad. He was uh, loving and he was hateful. He was heroic. You know what I'm saying? Like he was. He was old when he had me. He was in the motherfucking Second World War. He fought Hitler. Yeah. Not for, you know, yeah. friends. Yeah. You know, they would have a fist fight with Hitler. <laughs> and his buddies went over there and they sorted out. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is people are nuanced. We all know that. It's both good and bad. So the good part of my dad is he, he uh, saved us off in the icy grip of na Nazi rule. <laughs> the hateful thing about my dad was his crazy theory uh, that having a cock had something to do with being a boy. We <laughs> can't even understand that kind of thinking. Like, how can you have that thought? <laughs> but back then, they could think these bizarre fucking <laughs> believe people that say this shit are progressive. I'll tell you that progressive means the future, right? Tell me something that not every other motherfucker's telling me. And then I'll call you progressive. But you say L B G T you just fucking memorize those letters, you fucking give me that more shit. If you're progressive like me, I'm progressive, I say. I believe in the L G B T Q A B C D E F G H I J K L B Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Now I've done my ABCs. Would you tell, just tell me what you think of me? Because <laughs> obviously, you think L G B T Q fucking covers everything? You fucking narrow-minded fucking bigots. What about <laughs> what about the D's? You probably don't even know what they are. I don't either, but they'll show up, you know? <laughs> if you think it's gonna stop at 26, they're gonna have to invent new letters for the alphabet. <laughs> if any of you guys wanna like sell one of your kidneys or something, I have $8,000. You wouldn't say it. How old are you, though? I'm 50. Uh, I'm 68. 68 minus 50 is 27. <laughs> 39, that's 30. 200. God damn, I shouldn't have taken all that fucking LSD before the show. I took a handful of LSD before the, every show. <laughs> Before the show, I like to take a handful of LSD. And uh, I had to go to the psychiatrist, they made me. And uh, what a broken record this fucker is. All he ever says, he's like, stop taking fistfuls of LSD before every show. I'm like, wah! I say to the guy, ah, like that. Because, first of all, why is he an expert? You know what I mean? I'm the guy taking the fucking LSD. But he knows everything about it. Uh, fucking uh, hallucinogenic drug. And uh, you should get a load of this guy. He's a nine foot fucking blue dog. <laughs> <laughs> With an ostrich head. Anyway. But he studied all his melting bucks behind him. And he, knows everything. he knows everything. I come from, so, anyways, the stewardess, right, comes up. She, goes, she tells you, this Listen, in case the plane right. crashes and black white smoke comes racing back toward you to fill your lungs and nose. Would you mind letting other people out first? Could you help people out? And then you have to say, yes, they tell you that. They go, it must be, you must say it. Like that's binding somehow, you know. <laughs> you 
scrambling over the wing. And you go, ah, fuck, I forgot I told that lady. Ah, <laughs> second. Go, All right, after you. So I lie. You know when you lie, you lie too much, you know? They go, would you do that? I go, yes. Oh, yes. I was going to ask you that if I could do it. That's what's funny. <laughs> But of course, in real life, fuck that shit, man. I'd be, uh, I'd be kicking my own mother back. Oh, get the fuck you out of full life. What do you want? Were you ever on the TV? What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm on the TV, man. I was on the TV. I should never die of coronavirus. Do you think that there's celebrities going, hey, I hope I get that fucking coronavirus. I'll be a bigger celebrity. Yeah. I'm sure there are fucking motherfuckers like that. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was the coronavirus coming out. I really apologize. You know, because it's probably suspended in the air around here somewhere. <laughs> but um, if you do die in the next couple of days of the coronavirus, and it turns out that it was from me, you have my sincerest apologies, and um, I would uh, uh, give you uh, some champagne. Hey. Oh, look. He's right. I didn't mean to embarrass him or anything like that. What are you giving anyway? What are you giving out? Bag? Souvenirs? Of what? The glasses? Glassware. Memory. <laughs> la, da, 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 da. Misty watercolor. Now the plane goes down, right? First of all, you ain't gonna survive anyway. Let's not fucking kill ourselves. Does anybody believe that horseshit? Oh, if the plane uh, goes down in the Pacific Ocean, don't worry about it. On account of your uh, seat cushion is a boat. <laughs> Is that? Oh, God damn, why did I buy that boat? I should have bought a bunch of seat cushions. Look at that whole fleet of them for that kind of thing. God damn, I'm sniffling. Oh, fucking shit. Listen, don't worry about it. It's the cocaine. I did this cocaine. I don't have enough for anybody, but everybody. I have enough for myself. But it's going down the back of my throat. And it's that fucking baby laxative this motherfucker cuts it with. My dealer, you know, <laughs> he's always frying fucking, uh, you know, uh, rice aroni with his shirt off. And he's fucking, ah, damn, you know, I'm like, ah, I can't. He's like, well, can't you just give me the coke without the baby laxative in it? Like, I'll pay more. He's like, that's not how it works. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, oh my god. I don't need to You know, if you go down at that speed on an airplane, there's nothing left of you. You are nothing. Vaporized. Stuff. Your stuff. That's what they find. A plain load of stuff. Ashes to ashes. Stuff to stuff. They find you in the plane and... Uh, and then, of course, your uh, relatives, they want to get you back because they want closure, you know? <laughs> so you go, ah, God damn, I keep thinking of Timmy's final thought on the downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get to sleep. I was thinking about it. If only I could look at his remains. <laughs> then I could put it all behind me. <laughs> Have a good night's sleep after that. <laughs> and you're not gonna, I don't want to, you know, uh, disabuse you of any happy notions yet, but you're not gonna get your kid. Forget about that dream. <laughs> you think they construct you, they go, oh, look, that looks like, uh, look at that, silver, uh, orange, that looks like uh, the hair of uh, Timmy. 
let's put them together because didn't you find a sty bone here? And he goes, that's insanity. They got work to do. They just go on a plane. They go, all right, maybe they find your ID. Go, it says here, Norm, 190 pounds. Okay, let's shovel 190 pounds of stuff into a bag. Come on, guys. God damn. Daylight's burning. Write Norm on the side of that one. Send it over to Norm's mother. She'll let us see. And my mother gets to go, oh, excellent. I don't remember Norm having three ears, but I guess none of us really know him after all. He's to the other a stranger. The only time you ever survive in an airplane like that is if you crash into the Andes. <laughs> then God, in his mercy, lets you... You know, God likes to laugh as much as the next one. <laughs> so he goes, hey, listen, we're not, I'm not going to make these guys die right away. First, I'm going to have them, you know, battle a moral quandary. <laughs> Cannibalism. <laughs> I believe that's how this whole fucking thing started, by the way. Somebody ate a bat. That's what I heard. Somebody in China ate a fucking bat. <laughs> See, that's what we get for being, uh, everybody should be, and I believe in Joaquin Phoenix, everybody should be a vegetarian. <laughs> you know what? It's the ethical thing to do. You didn't kill animals. We're gonna have an impossible bat. <laughs> <laughs> If everybody is having a possible bat, I'll bring two more, okay? <laughs> but I'm against cannibalism. If you know anything about any of my work, <laughs> I like to give back, you know? And, uh, and I'm not going to fucking preach to you people, you know what I mean? You believe what you believe about fucking cannibalism, and I'm not going to change your mind. But uh, I like to get the young people. Oh, the young people. Yeah. I travel all across this great continent, except for Mexico. I'm not going to but, uh, the other two countries of this great continent. And I go to elementary schools, and I go to middle schools, and I go to high schools, and I talk to the kids. I go, listen. I go like this. Listen. You might think it's cool to eat a guy in fucking algebra class. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie to you, you will be the talk of the school for quite some time. But the future, I say, the future. Think about the future. I go like that, you know. But sometimes I think on my, on my high horse on a can, I go, oh, I'm uh, against cannibalism. But I've never really faced anything because I've always lived in a world that had a lot of cheese sandwiches. But, <laughs> what about the Andes? No cheese sandwiches. So they get there and they have to decide. And they always take too long, that's the problem. You know what I mean? They wait till they're maddened by hunger and they always decide the same thing, to eat everybody inside. <laughs> then by this time they waited 40, 50 days, they're like, ah, they're gorging. You shouldn't gorge. They're like, ah, they got eating a co-pilot and I got co-pilot all over them. <laughs> Anyways, you're not supposed to gorge. I read that in a book. That's what nutritionists say. Graze, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have small, don't gorge. Uh, this is what I implore Some you. Some of the space drafts are $18. Gorge, like some of them are like graze, yeah. which means like every like you you wake up, you have a small uh, little portion of copilot. <laughs> then mid morning, you have another small uh, little portion of uh, uh, copilot. Weird. I think it's the and at noon, you have a small little portion of copilot. Are you, are you gonna keep this? <laughs> and then, then how come I bought the I same one twice? You gotta keep the same glass. <laughs> Sometimes I should get two fucking glasses. Or like, why is there a The problem is, they are not grazing because they waited too long, if you were listening earlier. Where they were gorging. I think there's the same number, $18. That's because they didn't prepare themselves for the eventuality. You see what I mean? I'll tell you something. For you young folks in the crowd, I'm an old fella. you got to prepare yourself for every eventuality this world's going to throw at you, and they're going to throw a lot at you. <laughs> I know what I do. You know, because I got it set up in my head. Like when I was uh, flying here from uh, uh, Las Vegas, we hit some turbulence. I was like, I'm eating that fucker in 13A. <laughs> <laughs> you 
That looked delicious. I saw my way in. Thank you. Thanks. The driver drove me from the airport, right, to here. And he said to me, he's driving me, he said, you know what's great about Orange County? No racists. There's no racism. I go, what? Man, is man, what are you talking about? There's no racism. So anyways, I'm driving and I'm looking around. Everybody's white. Right? So I say to the guy, I go, well, you know, it's pretty easy to say you're not racist. There's no black people at all. The guy goes, we got our share. <laughs> hey, what? what the fuck is that? Why is every cabbie racist? Does anybody know that? I think it's because nobody argues with them. Like, you know what I mean? When I get into a cab, the guy starts saying racist stuff. I don't fucking agree with the guy. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Tucker Carlson tonight. I just want to get home. <laughs> so I just agree with whatever. It gets more and more horrible. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I know you're right. He had the right idea. Listen, can you just get me? <laughs> one guy, this is what one guy said to me. He goes, you know what the kind of problem is in the goddamn city, don't you? I go, I have a pretty good idea. What is it? <laughs> and he goes, uh, too many fucking brindle heads. So anyways, I didn't know what that meant. So I go home, and I look it up on the computer, which is very smart. <laughs> they don't have any uh, brindle heads. This is a computer. They have brindle, right? And then they have a head, but there's no way of putting them together in any comprehensive, meaningful way that would make you hate a race. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. I don't mind blaming the fucking brindle head. As long as we don't know what it means. They can be the scapegoat. As a matter of fact, what about a goat? You know, the old people, maybe they had some bad ideas, but maybe they had some good ideas. You know, what if we blamed all the problems like immigration and gun and everything on uh, goats? <laughs> Go fuck those, cause those fucking goats <laughs> over there eating tin cans and shit. Let's fucking burn one and to God, you know? And then everything will be cool and, you know, the tuition prices will be... <laughs> It's a uh, it's a uh, election year. This is a, a particularly hard time for me because everybody wants to know your opinion. I don't have any opinions. I'll, t I'll tell you honestly. I have a, I have opinions like that everybody knows, but they're not really opinions. You know, like yellow is the best color, or whatever. You know? <laughs> but I don't have. I come from a different time. Like when I was young, people would have maybe six opinions. <laughs> uh. Sometimes you meet a guy, I have eight opinions, and go, God damn, that fucker's opinionated. <laughs> but anyway, we had six opinions. And most of the opinions were about food, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time it's like, Frankenberry, what are you, retarded? <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta have an opinion about everything, you know? <laughs> Especially comedians. Because somewhere along the way, I don't know what happened, but I've been a comedian for 30 years, people started thinking comedians were smart. <laughs> but no, I know comedians. They're, we're all fucking retards. Right? <laughs> but people will go, hey, what about that big problem with the Panama Canal? We should ask a comedian. <laughs> what do you think? Now, in the old days, no one did this, you know what I mean? No one went, hey, oh, should we bring back, should we bring back the troops from Vietnam early? Because you yeah, know, that's going to be the election. We should ask Red Skeleton. <laughs> no one did that. But now, <laughs> comedians are thought to be very, very smart. Because they pretend they're smart. A lot of them pretend they're smart, let's face it. I read this one thing. It said, uh, the comic is the modern day philosopher, you know? And first I thought, I wonder what the actual modern day philosophers think about that. <laughs> <laughs> They're working hard, man. That's a hard job, because most of the shit has been written. <laughs> they're trying to come up with new philosophy, and they're like working like dogs, and then they go, hey, who the fuck is Bill Maher? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything new 
we're here at all. <laughs> Bill Maher is a bit of a, a, bit of a expert. <laughs> He's a theologian, I know that. You know, they, uh, they know how God exists, you know that question. Does God exist? A question that's plagued mankind for since the dawn of time. Well, Bill Maher's figured it out. <laughs> Had some time between his horror and his weed. <laughs> to do a little theologian. In. I am not an atheist. I'm not strong enough to be an atheist. I'm not smart enough to be an atheist. But I'll tell you something. If I was an atheist, I would never try to talk anybody else into being an atheist. Not right to me. Sin. I know atheists don't believe in sin. But to me, that's a sin. Because uh, what are you doing? You know, you're going out to be like, excuse me, you with the glint of hope in your eye. Come on over here. <laughs> I want to tell you a thing. Yeah. You're born, you get sick, you die, and they put some dirt on you. Okay, so. You want to come over to my house and talk about it all day with my friends? That's all we do. We have a podcast. <laughs> But I try to be a good, you know, I, and, and first of all, anybody can get into heaven. You know, I personally, I'm a Christian, you know, but I don't, I'm not one of those people that fucking try to shove it down your throat. Like, anybody can get into heaven. If you live a good life, you know what I mean, and you treat people kindly, and, uh, you know, you do the best you can, and... Uh, you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Go <laughs> 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 into heaven. I think it's the hardest thing in the world. All you do is go, I accept Jesus Christ. And it's over. It's not like you have to do things every day. Or <laughs> they do have rules, you know. You know what? Like people sometimes think Christians are very, very fucking, you know, uh, self-righteous. But it's not true. A true Christian is very humble. He knows that he's a sinner. He knows he can't help but sin. All he can do is sin, you know? And I know this from real life because I try to be a good Christian, and yet I eat apples. You know? <laughs> On page one of the book. <laughs> the book. <laughs> By the way, that book changes fast. God damn. <laughs> you read the first page, this is going to be the greatest book ever. God damn. And the fucking garden, you get to do anything they want. Oh my God. And you turn the page, holy fuck, what fuck? Because <laughs> on page two, it's Eve. Ah, fucking apple all over. <laughs> Like, I love women and everything like that, but I don't like Eve. <laughs> because I got like a back, uh, like a, a thing came out, uh, L3, something like that. Whatever. I don't want to bore you with all the. Uh... But anyway, I have a, a shooting pain down my leg from the, my back, you know, down to my heel, right? So, anyways, the doctor was telling me that's because of Eve. <laughs> so, you know, of course I'm going to carry some hard feelings, you know. <laughs> but I try not to. I try to forgive. You're supposed to forgive. You're not supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> what about, you know, uh, things in, in uh, that, like the Ten Commandments? Some of them are very easy, you know, to, like, thou shalt not kill. Come on, you know. <laughs> That's so hard. By the way, don't you find it weird that murder is considered a worse crime than manslaughter? Isn't that odd? Like murder, you just shoot a guy in the head. You ever slaughter a man? <laughs> like, fucking, it takes like 25 minutes, the guy's being slaughtered the whole time, like he knows what's going on. <laughs> OJ, <yeah. laughs> Great OJ McDuffie. <laughs> I'll tell you this though. Jesus. I don't like that. I wrote down this. Small world. Right? I wrote it down right here. Small world. Just think about small world. I don't like it. 
I don't like that phrase. Don't like it. Polar opposite. I don't like it. <laughs> Let's say I took you, right, and I just dropped you on the South Pole or the North Pole. And go, where are you? You might easily say the wrong one. Because they are so incredibly similar. <laughs> Couldn't be more similar. Polar similar. <laughs> but small world. This is what I posit to you. That the world's not small. Just because you go to France and meet a guy from Irvine. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> You go to France, you look at the Arts of Triumph, and there's a fellow that sits down next to me, you go, hey, where are you from, fellow? I'm from Irvine. The guy goes, I'm from Irvine, too. Small world, you say, but no, proves nothing. <laughs> the fact that you're saying it proves the obverse, because, come on, most of the time, you're going to go there, you're going to go, hey, fellow, where are you from? I'm from Irvine. He's going to go, I'm from Paris, France. Just look there, over there. <laughs> <laughs> Big world, huh? God damn, this is a giant planet. I rethought my small world thing from last year. This world is so big, we don't know each other. We have fucking, I know 12 people. What about you? Small world, it's huge, huge, huge world. God damn, I should be. 50 eggs. <laughs> 50 eggs. Regret. Well, yeah. Got it. I had it. Dude, that's Frank Sinatra. My friend was going, one thing, I have no regrets. I go, Frank Sinatra, you have regrets, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this election's coming up. So and people, oh, what's your opinion? I'm going to give me... You go, this is who I'm voting against. The coronavirus. Okay, if anyone supports the coronavirus, fuck that guy. I'm, I'm dropping that guy. He's out. Oh, I hate the coronavirus. virus. Oh my god. Imagine you wake up, right, tomorrow? And there's seven people around you in hazmat suits. <laughs> now listen, enjoy the next week. I shouldn't raid on people's parade. The next two weeks, I would say, is going to be, that's what we should consider the parade of our lives. <laughs> you know, before blood starts coming out of every <laughs> ears and nose and filling the lungs, uh, 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 I just hope I don't get it. <laughs> I would trade everyone else in the world getting it to me. <laughs> Isn't <that> interesting? <laughs> He's right. <laughs> interesting. I, should, I, I, should, I say a retard too much in my head. And I gotta tell you, I'll tell you this right now. When I'm talking about retards, I am talking. Clear about people who have Down syndrome. <laughs> and, uh, listen, there's got to be context to these things. The guy got real mad, some fucking newspaper writer. He's like, ah, you're stupid. He called me stupid, which also, why isn't that bad? You, you know? <laughs> you call a guy stupid. Well, that's an insult to stupid people. They don't fucking have any you know, control over how stupid they are. <laughs> anyway, this context is very important. When I set my eyes, I love retards, you know? And I, I don't say Down syndrome. I don't say people with Down syndrome because I don't want people to think I'm a doctor. <laughs> want me to hit their knee with a hammer. You know these doctors. Can you believe we still allow doctors to hit our knee with a fucking hammer? I like. It's like from the cartoons back in the 50s. Guy hits your knee with a hammer, get out of my knee! Ah! And he writes down, he's like, excellent. <laughs> exactly how you should react when he's struck by you. Good for you. Boy, 
it's hot, huh? I mean, I know a lot of this is just symptoms, but it's also, I feel it's actually hot as well. A lot of the heat is just coming from the amount of people in here. By the way, congrats, it was so nice of you guys to come and sit beside strangers. Very nice, thank you very much. Clap. Clap while you're still able. Who thought it would end this way? I always thought it'd be the Arabs. Ah, that's a good thing you can say anything. There's absolutely no reason to be politically correct about anything because we're all equal, because we're all going to be dead in a month. Yep. 30 days from now, this will be an empty room. The wolves will rule. If you happen to survive by some, you know, incredible stroke of luck, don't expect the hungry timber wolves to have an ounce of pity. Jesus. This is my thing with retards. <laughs> I love retards. Listen, here's the problem. I envy retards. I had a friend when I was a little kid. This is a true story. My, my father made me be friends with a retard. Now, this was before TV movies and shit where it's cool. And uh, his name was Vipon. He was my friend. And... I didn't get along well in class, and people didn't like me, and it didn't help when Vipon, in class, kissed me on the lips. <laughs> but looking back, I realized it was sweet and everything, but at the time, this was before TV movies. <laughs> but ever since, but I've always lo I loved uh, uh, Vipon, and I've had like two retired friends since then. As an adult, it's been hard, you know, because like in my, uh, in my apartment, uh, four, uh, doors down, there's a, a two elderly bear and they have a retarded son. And I said, I want to be his friend. And they said, no, <laughs> for obvious reasons, because it's a cynical world we live in, yeah? But my, here's my thing. I envy retards, right? Like, because they're happy. I don't understand pitying them. And what is a worse sin, I ask you? <laughs> Pity or envy? I don't know. <laughs> I have to go consult scriptures for a couple of hours. I'll be right back. No, I can't answer that question. But I tell you this, I envy retards. If there's a serum making me a retard, I'll take it in a second because they have happiness. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been happy, but you know, it's not easy. And how often are you happy? Not like a retard, everybody's happy all day. <laughs> you know, you have little times where you're happy, you know what I mean? Like like me when I first wake up, are you like that? You know, you wake up, ah, hey, there's my temper pinning pillow. I'm, uh, <laughs> excellent. That's my best purchase ever. But then then light comes in through the bottom of the door, and then suddenly your life is all around you. Like, ah, fucking stupid life. Why did I do that? What kind of a thing am I? And then you went in the bathroom. You ever look in the bathroom mirror? I'm not talking about physical, but you look straight into your eyes, and your eyes look straight back at you. And you're like, ah. What the fuck have I become? This wasn't the way it was supposed to. <laughs> that I like to have a friend go, I like bananas! I, go, oh. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. <laughs> How about that? I like bananas too. <laughs> they're yellow. Of course they're yellow. The best color of all. <laughs> when you say you and I go buy a banana, a yellow banana. <laughs> the pity I'll never understand. It's when it's pity again. I see people, you know, they'll look at retarded people that, and they'll they'll shake their heads sadly, you know? They go, oh, look at those retards over there laughing. Jesus. They don't understand the horror of life. That's what they, 
They can't comprehend the wolfish nature of man. <laughs> Makes me shake my head. So. <laughs> the most tragic part of all is there's no cure. You know they'll probably die happy. <laughs> Psychology. Now I don't know psychology. You know what I mean? No. You know how you have your brain that's in the front, but in the back you have another brain. So I don't know whether I believe it or not. But my friend, everything is psychology to this guy. You know, my friend. So he'll say like, uh, one time I remember I was having uh, dinner with the guy, and he says, uh, I had a glass of milk. I love milk. My God, a chilled glass of milk. What's better than that? You know. So I have milk. So the guy says to me, you know why you're, you like drinking milk, don't you? So I go, well, it's not because I enjoy the taste, because I know this guy, you know. So he goes, no, it has nothing to do with it. He goes, you're, you're drinking milk because you, you miss sucking on your mother's breasts. <laughs> So now, now I have a glass of milk. What am I gonna guzzle it down? You know? <laughs> the milk's gone now. It's off the fucking. Milk. And you guys don't know my mother, but she's 88 years old. You know what I mean? She's a lovely woman, but she's not. You know, she is the greatest person I've ever met. My mother. I've been thinking about this as as we reach the end of our civilization. <laughs> That my mother is like a saint, you know what I mean? And, and I think, like the Me Too movement, you know, a lot of people have different opinions on that. To me, it's the only like revolution I've ever witnessed, you know? It's here, and the speed of it is spectacular. You have women who have been basically slaves for the past four or five hundred, six hundred, since forever. <laughs> and now they're given what they should have always been given, their birthright equality. Right? So it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. But every revolution has casualties. And I was thinking, perhaps my mother is one of those casualties, the type of woman my mother is. And I'm sure you know women like this, you know what I mean? Like, it could be your mother, maybe it's your grandmother, depending on how old you are. But it's the women that, remember there were, so, like when I was young, my mother is selfless, you know? She, we'd be eating and she'd be like, everybody, do you have enough? You need more gravy? There's potatoes, and you have the... Oh, the turnips! You know, she, 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 and I have the turnips, and you get some more. And I go, ah, yeah, you want something to eat, Mom? You gonna come? And she goes, I'll eat up here. You know, so she was just eating like the scraps of what we ate, and then after, it's like, you don't want us to wash dishes, right? She's like, no, no, you lost your game. So, my mother's still alive. She lives right next to me, and um, she is the most wonderful person, you know? Thank you. But I don't think that they'll exist anymore. I honestly don't. Like her eyes shine love. She has never uttered a phrase that's had a drip of um, irony to it. You know what I mean? She's just a beautiful person. Like she, she will go to the store. The other day she went to the store, she came back. She's like, I have the funniest story now. I go, what happened? She goes, a woman at Yummy, she bought a, a Pineapple for dollar sixty nine, but last week was a dollar nineteen. I said, "That's not a story. <laughs> it's not funny. I know that, but it's certainly not everything you walk by is a story." And yet I trade places with her in a second, you know, because she's so happy, not retarded happy, but you know, very, very happy. But I wonder what would become of those type of women, because I think it's a particularly feminine. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know why. Because I don't want to suck her tits, that's why. <laughs> Maybe that makes me shallow. <laughs> I have a friend of mine. 586 pounds, this guy. I'm not lying to you. I, when, I was, when I was young, I'm blessed enough to have the four friends that I had in grade three 
still I'm in touch with him, you know, we've all grown, obviously, but the one guy, he was chubby at the time, but then he became obese, morbidly obese, now I, well, he's 586 pounds, and he's never, now he's going to start to, he's really taking it seriously, he's going to get better, so we got psychiatrists with him, nutritionists with him, there's four of us, one of us goes see him all the time, he's right here in Los Angeles, and um, 586 pounds, we're all 100% behind him. I was not 100%, like part of me wanted to gain 14 pounds. <laughs> but he said a thing that struck me very odd. Oh, this can't be good. I don't know how this will affect the joke. But maybe you'll like it, maybe it's the last joke I ever tell. <laughs> He's 586 pounds. But anyways, this is what he told me. He said you wouldn't know it, Norm, but you know at one point in my life I was only 135 pounds. And I said, yes, yes, I know that. You were every weight up to 586 pounds. <laughs> and that, right? <laughs> you didn't just show up looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gave birth to a wonderful 586 pound baby. We had to do a C section right now. <laughs> Killed 14 people in childbirth. <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> okay, anyways, you guys are wonderful. The show ended a long time ago. <laughs> Remember to wash your hands. My dad's going to do anything. Maybe we should just face it straight in the fucking face. You know? I like being up on stage. Usually this was my escape from life, you know, but now it's so deep in my head, you know, my oncoming perishing. <laughs> I can't seem to drop it. I can't seem to let it evaporate. Yeah. But listen, we're all going to die from something. Well, we know if we're going to die from it. <laughs> it's not like there's any mystery. It sort of equalizes everything. It's sort of beautiful in a way. Two weeks from now, <laughs> wolves. <laughs> Wolves will rule the world. It's about time, I say. You know, we talk about all the poor, oh, what about these people? Oh, what about they were discriminated against? What about a fucking wolf? <laughs> you ever think of this about wolves? There's like 30,000 something wolves in the world. There's 100 billion dogs, right? But a dog was a fucking wolf. But he was just a cowardly wolf. <laughs> and I think, like, oh, I know what the people are. They give me cookies, you know. Wolf, no, you fucking pussy. We can tear their fucking throats out. <laughs> I'm a goddamn wolf. Fuck them. I'll sit in the fucking bag for shit. <laughs> I'm a wolf, pal. And then we treat them bad, you know what I mean? We don't even treat them like they're human. They don't have to vote. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. Oh, no. <laughs> Only they'd eat the impossible bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fizzling to an end. <laughs> As we all will. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> exaggerating for the point of comic hyperbole, but in the next week, there's about 600 people here, I would say 60 of you dead. Okay, now, 
I'm not going to point out which ones because I don't think that's fair. <laughs> but please get your affairs in order, you know what I mean? <laughs> Start believing in something, anything. Believe in any God, you know what I mean? You don't have to pick mine. Pick a false one. <laughs> Listen, I may have picked a false one. That's one of my worst fears. Like that I die and I wake up, I'm like, ah, it's you! No, what? I thought it was the other guy. No, crazy. What was I doing? I should have been slaying infidels the whole time. <laughs> God damn it. Wouldn't you? Just my luck. Oh, well. Whatever. I know, I know. I know, I understand. Listen. Jesus. You guys have been wonderful. I love you. Take care of yourself.